really for ISRO as uh, Professor mentioned. And uh, this has three modules. One is, uh, you know, in the prelim, uh, pre first I will discuss about uh, on the operation of the factory. And then secondly, uh, followed by, I will he'll be presenting some few of the elements what we developed uh, for as a part to offer the wide band characteristics. The third, we by employing five elements, we have uh, uh, realized the refractory and uh, we have characterized it with the experimental, experimental uh, through experimental setup. So that uh, I will be discussing. So refractory uh, basically it's an antenna uh, which come uh, which is uh, like, like which is realized by uh, combining the uh, like a decent, uh, unique features of uh, parabolic refractor and the planar array. So that is what is the refractory. So these are my outline of my presentation. These are my outline of my presentation. I will be briefly discuss about the refractory, how it is evolved, and what is the features of this refractory briefly, followed by objectives, and then three modules we will be discussing. And then I uh, will be discussing about my future directions from now on and concluding comments, and followed by response to the experimental comments. So, evolution of refractory happened. Uh, the concept was originally proposed in the year uh, 1963 by Barry et al. And uh, so it was there, they were used waveguide as the element for phase correction. And uh, it, was, it was bulky. And after that, there was no progress in uh, for about a decade. And in the year 1974, Salman has proposed uh, a yeah, dipole integrated with the diode. So where by controlling biasing, they could manage to achieve the uh, like, uh, uh, estimate, uh, manage to get the required phase, com phase correction. And then uh, in the year 1974, 1977, uh, uh, Bellen has proposed a uh, yeah, four arm spiral with the integrated with the eight diodes, whereby activating and deactivating the particular diode, they could manage to achieve the uh, required phase con uh, corrections. And then, so uh, when the printer, printer technology has evolved, at that time, the Malagasy you made use of that technology and uh, he has proposed equal size patch antenna uh, attached with the transmission line stub. So, where length of the stub was contributing to the phase cor correction. Which was having highly resonant characteristics. Hence, so in the year nine, after that, about 10 years uh, after, uh, in between, there was no progress in that. So, in the year 1991, Wang has proposed a variable size patch antenna where the phase correction is done by uh, so geometric size of the uh, patch, uh, the unit cell element was contributing to the phase correction. Now, we will move on to see why we go for reflectory. Uh, though we have uh, several antennas like the parabolic reflector, the conventional antenna, many things like that, it has a certain features, which are one is the it is compact in nature because when you look at the uh, parabolic reflector, it is occupying a lot of spaces where, where when we use the reflectory, we can uh, make use of the reliable folding mechanism so that we can make a compact reflector. One second. Yeah, where we can make a yeah, compact, uh, 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 like, uh, like especially for satellite communication, at all, we can make a compact structure, compact system uh, perspective. Second advantage is that it has a shared aperture, uh, shared aperture concept also can be employed because here you can see along with the refractory, they could, they could integrate the solar, solar as well. And also we can integrate this FSS as well. If you want to use, make use of that uh, as, a, as a, either transmitter or refractory, both operation can be done. So that is the second advantage. It's a shared advantage. Third advantage is that if you want to achieve the dual beam operation in the parabolic reflector, this much complex structure need to be implemented. Whereas in this, uh, in this case, in the, in the case of reflector, array, we can use two layer structure where one layer will be uh, contributing for a one beam, the other layer will be contributing for other beam. This is the third advantage. The fourth, fourth advantage is that, so when we want to uh, achieve a dual band performance, so we have to go for in the parabolic in the case of parabolic reflector we are going for this much complex structures whereas in the case of refractory it is very simple we are by simply designing the multi layer element where one uh, layer element one layer of, in this case it is cross dipole is contributing uh, like uh, offering the phase for its band and this uh, patches collocated uh, patches in the other layer uh, is uh, uh, contributing for ka band so this is the uh, mainly uh, main uh, advantage is that its compactness so second advantage is that no feed network losses. And because we are in planar array, we have feed network losses. Here it is not, it is being avoided. And uh, so here we can achieve independent and simultaneous frequency and pattern reconfigurability by employing the active circuitry if required. And shared aperture as we discussed before. Uh, we can achieve dual or multi-beam as well. So far we have seen two, two beam. Uh, as far as my, my, to the best of my knowledge, 
in the literature it is up to what we they reported so limitation wise it has a major limitation is bandwidth when compared to the parabolic reflector yeah, in the case of parabolic reflector parabolic reflector offers infinite bandwidth where the feed antenna uh, controls the bandwidth here the feed as well as the geometry and substrate parameters of the elements uh, dictates the bandwidth of the particular uh, this reflector so power handling is uh, slightly less when compared to the parabolic reflector and dielectric process so now uh, based on uh, with this brief introduction we we'll move on to the objectives so first objective is the yeah, preliminary study on the conceptual equivalence between the micro reflector and the conductor backed artificial lens the second objective is the to design of uh, uh, reflector elements to offer a smooth and uh, smooth phase response which is the major requirement and along with uh, at the same time it should offer the large dynamic phase range so uh, when we explored the literature we found that multi resonant and uh, uh, cross dipole and concentric loop based elements are widely been used so we have adopted those study in our uh, thesis second uh, the third objective is the to evaluate the five reflector by employing five reflector elements we have realized a reflector wide band reflector so those has been characterized experimentally so that we will be discussing so now we will move on to the first our first part of work on the on the operational reflector so when we explored uh, similar uh, structures um, about the reflector then we found that reflector lens was uh, uh, we were not not from the literature so how it, actually it is originally proposed by cross uh, for the as an alternative to the parabolic reflector and the conventional lens so in the case of uh, parabolic reflector it is the physical curvature that offers the phase correction and here it is uh, the curvature and the uh, dielectric constant offers the phase correction so there is one more structure which was uh, proposed by berry in the year 1963 so where the shaped metal was uh, metal and along with the uh, shaped dielectric was offering the phase correction so in not and then in the year 1982 cross has proposed a simple structure as an uh, yeah, metal backed dielectric lens so as an alternative to the parabolic reflector and the uh, conventional lens so what we what what is advantage of being is that so here the waves are traveling uh, within the um, dielectric twice so hence we are reducing the thickness one half when compared to the conventional lens so when we explored the uh, literature uh, the experimental demonstration of this particular structure is not been done so hence we undertook that uh, study so here the design part it is uh, we have to estimate the 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 slant length which can be estimated by using this formula derived from fermat principle and this is the simulation model here we have we made use of a square aperture because uh, we, we thought of comparing it with the square reflector ray. that's why we have chosen this square aperture and this is the fabricator prototype and uh, so this is the measurement setup where we measured so initially we tried to measure this particular antenna at samir cm center chennai but we couldn't get the appropriate slots for that so hence we tried in our lab itself so it is it was a one month effort to characterize this antenna and we have made a setup in our environment because we had only network analyzer and the positioner and uh, few horn antenna so this particular horn antenna is to, we took from lab laboratory because uh, uh, and wave guide we purchased locally and then we made the setup ready and then we have optimized uh, this uh, observers here and there and we moved setup in several times Uh, by under the guidance of my professor and we finally we could manage to uh, measure this in this setup so these are the experimental uh, results simulation and experimental results comparison you can see that uh, we a fair comparison noted between the simulator and the experimental results so gain and gain when we look at the gain and the simulator and make measure gains it is a fair comparison is noted and uh, in order to show that how the lens is enhancing the gain of the uh, gain of the feed horn uh, so we measured the with the along with the flat reflector then uh, we measured we, by replacing the lens lens we again measured so we see that so there are about 5 db improvement gain improvement is uh, like uh, contributed by the uh, lens next we uh, as cross has proposed this uh, this as an alternative to the parabolic, parabolic reflector we compared the uh, radiation pattern performance with the parabolic reflector by simulation we are we found that uh, the Uh, this uh, smooth lens load of reflector lens reflector lens offered a uh, higher side lobes so we further investigated and uh, we noted that it was the shape that was contributing to this uh, higher side lobes then we designed this circular reflector lens and we compared with the parabolic reflector you can see that the pattern that are uh, obtained for a circular reflector lens it is, is fairly matching with the parabolic 
So when we look at the gain, you can see that this is the square reflector lens, this is the uh, 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 circular reflector lens, and this is the parabolic reflector. A fair match is noted between the circular reflector and lens and the parabolic reflector. We initially we mentioned that so we thought of comparing with the square magnetic reflector. So we have compared the gain of gain performance with the square magnetic reflector with the square reflector lens. You can see that yes, the magnetic reflector is giving offering the gain to about 2.5 dB gain higher than this. Why that is that is because it is a resonant structure and narrow band structure, whereas in the reflector lens is the wide band structure. That was the reason. And uh, so after doing this, well, we thought that okay, uh, in order to design this lens, why don't we up, uh, apply the reflector unit cell approach? So that was came in mind. Though it was uh, reported in the year in 2011, but they have not compared this with the uh, smooth lens loader like a uh, uh, reflector lens and all. So we, we undertook that study and we we took a uh, metal back the dielectric uh, uh, unit cell element. We characterized for reflection phase. Uh, you can and uh, in order to validate the simulation, we took the empirical formula uh, derived by Main and Halage uh, for the reflection phase uh, calculation. So we we calculated based on that, and then we could see that it is uh, perfectly matching with the simulation results. So this is how we validated our simulation first, and then uh, we have uh, measured uh, like uh, simulated for uh, various incident angles. We could see that so uh, yeah, uh, yeah, not much change in the reflection based performance and in order to show by looking at the face uh, reflection phase plot uh, how can we identify whether it is a narrow band or wide band plot so in order to show that we have plotted this one we here um, a square patch element reflection phase is plotted and this one is the uh, reflection based performance of the dielectric unit metal back dielectric unit itself so plus or minus 45 degree is widely being used as the uh, reference for the calculating the reflection phase bandwidth so why it was because so as mentioned by C C1 Piper in the year 1999. Uh, so if you have a if a phase variation is within the plus or minus 90 degree, uh, you will not have a destructive reference, a destructive effect between the incident rays and the reflected rays. So that is why we use those references. So here we, um, so you could see that so this is offering wider bandwidth than the narrow bandwidth. Next is uh, so how we are designing the reflector uh, stepped lens loader reflector. So here we are estimating the phase distribution and then uh, we are estimating the reflection phase of the element. By interpolating these two, we could realize the uh, stepped lens uh, uh, loader reflector. And then this is the realized structure. So in order to see the performance of the this particular reflector lens, when we taper this one, we have considered two tapered structures, tapered structures, those of whose gain performance will be compared later. And uh, this is the fabricated prototype. This we have measured at the uh, Samir Center for Electronics, and the, if you could see that simulated and measurement results are uh, fairly comparable. And uh, as a, so, uh, so we compared the stepped lens loader reflector radiation performance with the smooth lens uh, uh, smooth reflector lens. We we have noted that a fair match is noted, and uh, this are the comparison table. Uh, here the uh, key observation is that. So when we employ the refractory unit cell approach, we could reduce the thickness by even by one half when compared to this SMLR, which is smooth refractance just before uh, we, we have discussed sometime before. And uh, this is these are all the gain performances uh, estimated for various structures. One is tapered lens, a loader refractor, a smooth lens loader refractor, tapered dielectric and tapered uh, dielectric model, and model one and model two. You could see that, um, uh, yeah, fair comparison is noted. The oscillation is being noted in the gain plot. This is contributed by this is could be contributed. This is a, a single contributed by the edge diffraction effect at the edges of the feed horn as well as the uh, reflector lens aperture. So we also compared with the reflector ray, and uh, so the the objective of this study is that so why don't we come like come like may like why don't we uh, mention um, because all, all this structure was providing the phase correction so why don't we even reflector also giving phase correction why don't we uh, make it as a conceptual equivalence between the reflector and the artificial lens we undertook a small uh, simulation study and uh, if we could see that once again we consolidate uh, in this conventional lens the refraction and delay is offering the phase correction and in the case of uh, metal back dielectric lens Refraction delay and reflection is giving the phase correction. 
in the case of reflector ray it is the scattering by the unit cell uh, elements and the re-radiation re-radiation happens when the incident waves impinge on the over the element uh, the current will be induced that current will in turn uh, produce the em field uh, okay, magnetic field uh, that that is called as re-radiation the third one is reflection reflection is by the ground plane so uh, so structures are different though uh, the different structures are being employed but uh, the all the commonality between all this is phase correction so the one more structure is artificial lens as proposed as an alternative to the conventional lenses the artificial lenses generally realized by initially there it was realized by placing the metallic cylinder spaced apart in the air so then uh, a yeah, complementary of this is uh, by perforating the dielectric uh, holes in the uh, metal back dielectric so they have realized as a reflector also this made us our job easy because uh, uh, artificial lens concept they employed for reflector also and uh, if you want to enhance the patch gain of the patch antenna you can use artificial lens of a different dielectric constraint so consolidating these all these comments so artificial lens is basically your uh, the waves are getting impinged on the surface a flat uh, lens surface where the each uh, segment of the lens is uh, of a different dielectric constraint so here the dielectric constant at the center being higher and then the uh, very higher and uh, edges being the with the edges uh, edge element will being the with the uh, low dielectric constant so that is how they are achieving the planar wavefront so in order to see um, so show that the reflector ray can be considered as an artificial lens we have done a, a, a small simulation study you can see that so this is the reflector ray of uh, consists of 10 elements and uh, this is the metal back lens this is the conventional lens in order to see uh, what phase it offers at each position uh, then we have segmented the lens into 10 pieces of elements and then we have characterized each unit cell by the employing the uh, infinite array unit cell approach by, with the help of csv simulation tool and we have estimated the reflection phase offered by that particular unit cell amount uh, element so the thickness being center thickness we have took for each uh, unit cell center thickness of this uh, segment was being uh, employed for uh, during the simulation we found the reflection phase and uh, uh, this is the uh, transmission phase and reflection phase you could see that uh, the fr comparison is noted between these two phases because both is offering almost similar phases uh, that should be and uh, we compared with the as these are comparable then we compared this reflector lens uh, with the reflector reflector unit cell at each position of the uh, reflector, reflector, reflector we could see that so this is the phase offered by the cross reflector lens this is the phase offered by the reflector unit cell element this particular phase is estimated by the employing this parabolic equation and uh, these are comparable both are comparable and so uh, so now uh, we compared with the all these uh, plots you could see that so all this uh, when we look at the all these plots we can see that the difference between the phase responses are within the plus or minus 45 to 50 degree so consolidating comments is we have feed antenna we have a, a conventional lens or artificial lens it's giving a planar phase front in the forward direction and uh, uh, reflector lens or reflector ray is giving the uh, planned phase spread in the behind the feed or a reverse direction. So commonality between all these things is phase connections. So uh, which means indirectly, they, they indirectly or directly, it is both all are conceptually equivalent. So hence we are saying that so the artificial lens is being conceptually equivalent with the reflector ray. So next we will move on to the uh, next part of our uh, thesis, my thesis, uh, the design and analysis of reflector ray. Uh, before move on, uh, I will briefly discuss about design and analysis of reflector ray. Uh, design is um, just to be uh, first we have to find out the phase distribution at the each location, what phase need to be compensated by employing this parabolic equation. Second uh, step will be uh, to estimate the reflection phase of the element and uh, interpolating these two, we can uh, realize the reflector ray and uh, reflector ray system. So now before we move, uh, as our objective was the bandwidth. To enhance the bandwidth of the reflector ray. So now we will see how each part of the reflector ray system is contributing for bandwidth. We have a reflector ray and then we have a feed horn and it is up at distance like a space especially placed apart by the distance of focal distance 
and uh, so this focal distance is designed for one particular frequency that so hence it is very very variable for uh, different frequencies so this can affect the uh, bandwidth second part is uh, feed pattern and phase center phase center also vary uh, phase center of the horn also vary as a function of frequency hence the it will affect the reflector bandwidth then third second third parameter is the feed pattern so feed pattern is the controls the illumination illumination so all these three parameters are uh, indirectly like indirectly dictating the uh, directly dictating the illumination over the reflector so that will uh, affect the aperture efficiency therefore the gain as well, therefore the bandwidth for uh, different sorry therefore it affects for different frequencies therefore the bandwidth next we have elements so elements is based upon uh, generally we use 0.5 lambda as the uh, in special cases they use 0.5 0.75 lambda also inter element spacing and the element pattern also will have a impact on the reflector system performance why because if you have a too narrow beam width what will happen is the elements placed at the edge will not be getting illuminated prop, uh, like uh, efficiently and when you have a too broad beam width will have a mutual coupling effect also so we need to have comp like compromise between all these factors so these are the factors which affect the uh, reflector performance in general and uh, so for reflector factors affecting the reflector bandwidth is for if you consider element thickness and dielectric constant of the substrate the geometry uh, that we can dictate the uh, like, uh, that can affect the bandwidth conductor and dielectric losses and feed when we consider feed feed pattern feed taper and the symmetricity of the feed pattern and polarization of the feed pattern that is dictated and uh, phase center array and system parameters if you look at this uh, inter element spacing and focal distance so now we will see effect of feed taper so effect of feed taper is if you have too low feed taper what happens is uh, you will have a, a, a narrow beam width therefore the illumination will not be in the whole entire aperture hence uh, the illumination efficiency uh, will be reduced so second thing is that it has a larger side lobe when compared to the other feed taper hence it can affect the uh, it can introduce even therefore it can affect the reflector radiation performances and if you have a two broad, uh, when you have a high pp taper then you will have a broad beam so what happens is that time uh, you will have a, at the edges it will just illuminate uh, at the edges it will be illuminating la, a large amount of good amount of energy that's get spilled uh, over so spill over efficiency will be uh, poor so hence we have to compromise when we decide the feed taper we have to compromise between the illumination efficiency and spill over efficiency and the side lobe level as well and the beam width uh, this, this is the effect of feed taper second is the effect of focal distance this is being uh, tremendous because as we as uh, reported by mohammed rath you can see that the focal distance is affecting the for a given element focal distance is affecting the reflector bandwidth in two large largest extent, extent possible because when you consider the feed at the 33 cm uh, is giving this this particular uh, gain performance as a function of frequency and uh, 47 uh, cm is giving this particular performance when you look at the when we feed, when we place the feed at the a uh, position of uh, the 40 cm you can see that a yeah, very wide bandwidth is achieved so hence in our study also we have optimized our uh, focal distance in all the case all the reflector what we have studied second thing is inter element spacing inter element spacing so when we uh, change the inter element spacing so we could see that um, there is a effect in the radiation pattern performance of the reflector so this was uh, similar to, uh, by um, this was uh, analyzed by employing the ra theory and um, so based on the literature we have done extensive literature study where based on we understood that so bandwidth enhancement are done by two scenarios one is element with large substrate there are multiple scenarios are available but we have chosen two scenarios and uh, uh, one is larger substrate thickness so this also also has a two sub cases one is uh, increase in the primary substrate thickness which means for example if i am using artiduride we have to uh, we are we can increase the band thickness of the artiduride substrate then uh, it can improve the bandwidth at the but at the um, when we consider the, when you consider the cost it is much higher so there is a alternative solution is we can uh, loading air means so we are uh, using spacer we can place the uh, reflector and the reflector uh, like a uh, reflector ground plane and the reflector we can place it apart by by employing these spacers 
So this may not be the efficient solution for when we use a thick, a thin substrates because it may be bending. So planarity may not be ensured. Hence, we go for foam dielectric substrate. So in our study also, we have used foam as the uh, this uh, like for increasing the substrate thickness. Second approach is multi uh, elements design, appropriate element design. One is multi or sub sub elements. Um, uh, uh, for example, a multi cross, multi concentric loops, parallel dipoles, scrub rod cross dipoles, so on and so on. Many structures are available. And uh, so, in general, wide band, how wide band element is being designed is so when you want to get multiple, first, first uh, 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 as we mentioned sometime before, so first is multi, multi, multi resonant elements. So, if you look at this structure, so for this particular one uh, cross loop, we are getting one resonance. And when we add one more cross loops, we are getting two resonances. We can see that uh, two resonances are being uh, uh, like uh, achieve, uh, can be achievable. And when we add third ring, we are achieving three resonances. So uh, similarly, for fourth four uh, rings also, we are achieving the four resonances. So this is how by uh, each resonance will have a finite bandwidth, narrow bandwidth. By collating all these resonance bandwidth, we can achieve the yeah, wider bandwidth. That is the one approach. Second approach is that, again, it's also a micro, my, uh, parallel dipoles. Here you can see that for five parallel dipoles, we are achieving the uh, three resonances. How? Because uh, one, uh, one first resonance is achieved uh, like uh, dictated by the this way, central dipole of uh, with this higher, higher length. And the second resonance is dictated by the first uh, three dipoles. And the third resonance is dictated by the side dipoles. So, and second most important thing is that, so when we plot the reflection phase uh, performance as a function of length for different frequencies, yeah, no, no. It, should be, it should be parallel to each other. It should be parallel to each other and with the phase difference of finite, uh, like plus or minus 45 degree. So that is the one of the requirement when we design a higher, uh, like when we look for elements to offer the higher band. And uh, so, these are the some of the elements we have. Though we have done this extensive literature study, here I have presented some of the key elements uh, that offers the wider bandwidth. And if you look at this, most of the elements are uh, basically uh, based on uh, parallel dipoles or uh, rings, ring structure as well, multi -square, square ring or circular ring structures and cross dipole based structures. So uh, based on that, we have. Uh, uh, designed our elements about 17 elements being have been designed and uh, both those are based on these three subgroups uh, one is multi resonant element where we have uh, considered parallel dipoles and concentric rings the second approach is sub loader multi resonant elements and third one is sub loader cross dipole elements and combination of them also we have employed so uh, initially we have done simulation based study for uh, nine elements where we consider in order to show the effect of dielectric constant and the thickness, how it affect the reflection phase performance. Uh, we have considered uh, three substrates of a different dielectric constant and uh, sub, uh, substrate with the different thicknesses. So for example, in, the, in this case, we have considered uh, rogers for uh, different thicknesses. So then we have designed the different ele nine elements. Out of which I'm presenting only three elements for a want of time. And uh, first one is uh, parallel dipoles. You can hear the subvalent dipole. Why we call it a subvalent subvalent dipole is because it is uh, the length of the dipole is considered as a lambda by three, lambda by four, lambda by six, five, lambda by six. So hence we call it called it as subvalent parallel dipoles. Here uh, this is the flaw, uh, reflection phase uh, as a function of element size for different frequencies. You can see that as we mentioned uh, sometime before. You can see that for different frequencies, it is offering almost parallel response with the phase division between them is very, very less. Um, and uh, when we plotted the reflection phase performance for different thicknesses, you can see that this was expected. For lower thickness, it is, high, is highly resonant. For higher thickness, about 3.125 mm, we can see that yeah, smooth phase response is uh, uptight. So, and uh, when we uh, when I did for a different dielectric constant, so you can see that for lower dielectric constant, it is giving a smoother phase response, and for higher dielectric constant, it is giving a yeah, non smoother or uh, some kind of somewhat somewhat resonant nature. So from this study, what we observe is that when we go for higher thickness, we can get the smoother phase response, and the lower uh, at the same time we have to employ the lower dielectric constant as well, so that we can achieve the 
um, wider bandwidth and uh, the wider bandwidth. So next element is L shaped subloader uh, element. Here you can see that so all the curves are almost uh, all are perfectly parallel to each other, and the phase difference between them is uh, much low. Um, so this is the uh, reflection phase plot. We have uh, I have estimated for different thicknesses and different uh, for uh, the, the reflection phase plot that is estimated for different uh, uh, dielectric uh, substrate with the di different dielectric constants. You can see here also we observed the similar things. So uh, larger substrate thickness is offering the smoother phase response and lower di dielectric constant offering the considerably smoother response. And if you can see the third element is um, tapered stipole loader, uh, stub loader uh, cross dipole with the ring. And you can see that here also we are getting yeah, parallel uh, responses. And uh, this is the uh, reflection phase response for the uh, different thicknesses. This is for the different dielectric constants. So from this study, what we observed is that, so we, in order to design, get an element has to be uh, designed to offer a smooth phase response. And also uh, the phase difference between the uh, reflection phase plots, plots that are obtained for different frequency should be uh, within the plus or minus 45 degree and it should be pa pattern should be parallel to each other and uh, it should also provide at the same time it, uh, it should also provide a dynamic phase range a larger dynamic phase range so consolidating all these uh, parameters so, uh, for example this, this is the element structure uh, what is the operating frequency band and uh, what is the phase range that is offered by this element so i have consolidated for all these elements and uh, you can see that so all these elements are uh, giving uh, uh, wider operating bandwidth and uh, and also giving a dynamic phase range of about about 450 degree 450 degree dynamic phase ranges apart from this we have developed uh, six uh, seven uh, uh, hybrid elements where we employed uh, several structures like a cross dipole ring all so all these put together we have I have employed, and uh, we, here we can see that so improved uh, 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 yeah, dynamic phase range is achieved, and the bandwidth also. So most of the elements what we designed is on basically on a, a expand and XP sorry XK band and the KU band because uh, we did for project for ISRO that was the requirement was in KU band that's why we have designed the, all the elements in the range of XKU or KU bands. So these are the operating frequencies and uh, each of the element and their performances. So out of each, first five elements we I took for uh, realizing the refractory and uh, do the experimental uh, investigations. So development of wideband refractory antennas. So first, uh, uh, if I see first refractory. So this is the element we used, and uh, this is the element geometry side view. Uh, here you can see that this is the uh, drum plane and uh, our reflector, and this is the foam structure. Uh, as we mentioned this sometime before. We have used to foam uh, for a increase the uh, bandwidth, or uh, that, that 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 means for smoothen the uh, reflection based performance. We have used foam here because of three mm. So this three mm is chosen uh, by the based on the study we did using CST simulation tool in, um, by employing the infinite array or universal approach. Here we have done for different foam thicknesses. Here it is observed that for three mm we are getting uh, yeah, very, very nice smooth responses. Whereas in for other cases, there are some uh, resonances. Hence, we have chosen 3 mm foam thickness for our uh, element study. So this 3 mm foam thickness, we have employed for all the, the all the five elements. And uh, so these are the, so in order to see the effect of uh, incident angle, um, we have done, I have done for uh, different incident angles, both in uh, vertical and horizontal polarization, because it is uh, 90 degree rotationally symmetric. Hence we, and say, uh, excited two modes or so TE and TM modes to check the whether it is dually polarized or not. Uh, I could see that um, reflection phase as a function of uh, loop length is uh, giving there is no much difference between the plots. So hence it is offering the, so it, it can support up to 35 degree uh, incident angle and um, this incident angle is fixed based on the uh, phase variation uh, beyond uh, within uh, phase variation is within the plus or minus 45 degree we freeze this uh, angle of incidence. So that's what we have done. And this is the reflection phase plot for different frequencies. You can see that the yeah, somewhat parallel response is noted. And uh, so this is the uh, simulation model, what we designed. And uh, this is the realized uh, fabric, uh, fabricated prototype. 
and uh, this was also measured in the same setup what we have shown i have shown some time before uh, during the temperature lens analysis and the same as this is the setup we have done or carried out the measurements and uh, so these are the simulated uh, measured patterns so a fair comparison is noted there are some slight variation in the symmetry so that i will be discussing uh, uh, at the end of this uh, this module and uh, so why this, uh, the possible reason could be due to uh, due to the feed horn alignment so that i will be discussing later uh, these are the uh, gain and aperture efficiency as a function of frequency a uh, yeah, fair match is noted between the gain uh, like a simulated and the measured beam values and uh, so the second uh, second element uh, is employed for the design the refractory and this is the faber gate prototype this, uh, that also measured in the same setup what we shown uh, before and this is the simulated and the uh, measured uh, edition patterns um, you can see that yeah fair comparison is noted between the simulated and the measured patterns and also i have done a yeah, estimated the radiation pattern using uh, array theory that also have gave some somewhat a good uh, it was given me confidence also that so my measured results and experimental results i compared that with the simulator and experimental results so these are the gain performance uh, as a function of frequency gain uh, simulator and measured gain and aperture efficiency also plotted as a function of frequency you can see that the simulator between the there is a fair comparison is noted between the simulation and the results and the third element is um, uh, inverted e, stub loader inverted e elements so this was measured at this is the power gate prototype which was measured at the sac ahmedabad and uh, here this case in this particular element we have i have considered two different uh, one two two different approach i have I employed like one is by considering the inter element spacing of 9.2 mm i got the I, i have fabricated this particular prototype and where the optimal focal distance is found to be that 139.5 mm and uh, yeah so the similar yeah, fair comparison is noted between simulation simulated and measured results and this is the second uh, prototype uh, second uh, structure what we consider is where the interlament spacing is uh, considered to be uh, 10.6 mm and uh, where the optimal focal distance where when i kept this interlament spacing the optimal focal distance was 134.5 mm here uh, we are, i have not i have not fabricated i have just used the only simulation based study so you in order to compare the simulation result with the uh, like theoretical uh, results so i have estimated the uh, theoretical uh, patterns the theoretical uh, radiation pattern i uh, using by employing the ra theory so yeah fair comparison is noted between them and uh, so this is the gain plot for two scenarios one is so when i consider 9.2 mm as the spacing uh, we can see that so the operating bandwidth is from that about 12 gigahertz to 18 gigahertz within the 3 db gain bandwidth is and when we when i consider the 10.6 mm as the interlament spacing you can see that the operating bandwidth is getting shifted for example it is operating between the 10 to 14 14 uh, gigahertz and uh, so uh, at the same uh, while keeping this interlament spacing i am i am also optimizing the Focal distance in order to get, get the wider band bandwidth performances. So with this study, we can say, uh, say that so by controlling the interlament spacing, we can uh, like uh, vary the operating bandwidth as well. So that is what is the inference from this uh, particular study. So the fourth element is uh, concentric square ring elements. So this was also fa fabricated and uh, tested at the SAC Ahmedabad facility, and you can see that the fair comparison is noted. Uh, between the simulated and measured results, but when we look at the gain um, results, so though it is not giving fair comparison, so you can see that gain is having a huge deviation between the simulated and the measured gain results. This is the main uh, measured gain results. This is the simulated gain results. So in the, the in the during the measurement uh, in Ahmedabad, they have employed only the uh, X X K U band horn. That's why the measurement results are uh, present up to 15 gigahertz, not beyond that. so that is why it is in there and we we have found a large discrepancy between these two so then it was further investigated and found that uh, the uh, the material what we used to, to fabricate this particular structure was in house material it was laid up for uh, several months so with we had a we suspected that material only so then we uh, in order to uh, demonstrate that i have uh, slice uh, like i uh, taken four different samples from different parts of, parts of the board 
and uh, characterized at the IIT Madras, uh, thanks to Anjali and uh, um, Professor Subramanian. So we have characterized at the IIT Madras for the dialectic constant as well as the last tangent. So you could see that so large variation in between the uh, of a dialectic constant between the samples. So large variation is noted in the dialectic constant as well as the last tangent. So we have incorporated these changes in the simulation. Um, uh, the, the dialectic constant, the maximum variation, and the average variation of the dialectic constant and the last tangent in the simulation. Then we observed that um, a fair match, a somewhat better match is noted uh, between the simulated and measured gain results. So that that was a very very good approach. It was interesting to note. And the final factor is that so uh, this uh, this is a, this is based on the element uh, with the concentric circular ring elements. This was also fabricated and measured at the SAC Ahmedabad, and this was the simulated and measured results. And so here we have noticed that some discrepancy between simulated and measured results. I'm sorry, measured results, and also again, if you look at the gain plot, there is a deviation between the simulated and measured gain results. So this was due, then we further investigated and noted that because the slot we what we got for um, doing this measurement for of three antennas was only half day, so they could not able to like uh, um, like optim uh, optimize the focal uh, like a feed position during the measurement. So then, then we investigated uh, uh, by uh, the help of simulation tool. Um, when we uh, the, this feed horn initially I mounted and gave them for a measurement is 115 mm uh, as the focal distance. Focal distance here mentioned is the focal distance. What I mean is uh, from the aperture to this uh, particular factory, and then uh, we found some of some deviation between the simulator and measure measured results. Large deviation is noted. Then I investigated for a different uh, another focal distance, which is 140 mm. Then we I observed that so yeah, fair comparison is noted between the simulator and measure gains. So uh, then we conclude that we have we, we this possible reason for this uh, discrepancy could be the focal distance optimization during the measurement. So 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 far we have seen that in the, some of the measured results we have found uh, some non-symmetrical patterns. The possible reason would be because the feed horn what we uh, got from a local vendor, and um, so this is not a standard uh, horn and uh, standard gain horn, but uh, we purchased uh, we locally uh, procured, okay. and uh, so we we suspected that the feed corn probe alignment and uh, the, uh, the the flange uh, arrangement between the, uh, the fl fl flange arrangement between the horn and the, the waveguide aperture. So that was my uh, our suspicion. Hence, we have considered two scenarios. One is 10 degree tilt in the field probe because when uh, when it rotates, that time uh, it might the field probe probe might be uh, displaced or uh, it's misaligned. So that was uh, that is one scenario we consider. Second scenario is that um, one degree rotation of the horn, the flanges of the horn and the, the wave gate might be uh, twisted or tilted. So one degree rotation of the horn. The third one is what we what I consider is gap between the horn uh, two flanges of the uh, horn and the uh, gate. So gap between might be a one point two mm. So because though it flat by by visual inspection we could see that it is flat, but so we thought that there might be a point two or point two mm uh, gap might be there. So that's that was considered based on these two scenarios were considered. Then we then I estimated the simulation patterns. Uh, you could see that this the red one is the normal horn radiation pattern without this misalignment and all. Then I estimated the simulation uh, radiation pattern for both H plane and E plane. You can see that there is a, a significant effect uh, of this particular uh, uh, effects. So the, there is a change in the radiation pattern because of this particular uh, effect. So you can see that the symmetricity also getting affected and also the uh, larger side lobe being uh, being. Uh, Exhibited, so uh, this might be the possible reason because in our measurement we have found some some of the unsymmetrical pattern in the measure, measured results. Hence, so this might this could be the possible reason for that. So that's what is uh, observation from this particular study. Yeah, and also you can see that see there is a reduction in the gain as well. Uh, so these are the possible reason. And the consolidating all these performances of uh, 
in the country. The arrays is what we consider is 20, 20 centimeter and only for only one array, we have considered one, two, uh, 21 centimeter. And the most of the uh, four, for first four antenna, I have considered design frequency as 40, 14 mm. The last antenna, I have considered design frequency as 15, 15, sorry, 15 gigahertz. I'm sorry. And the first four, 18 elements. And this is actually the inter element spacing I consider is 0 0.5, 0 0.5 lambda. And uh, the reference gain, the gain bandwidth the reference I have to take is 3 dB and uh, and in some cases so one dB as well. And you can see that so the bandwidth is within in this these structures about 40 percent. That was the major requirement by the ISO. And uh, the last one is offering the lower bandwidth because you can see that the gain performance is here it is about 25 dB, whereas here it is 27.8 dB. So when gain increases, obviously gain per bandwidth product should be constant. So the bandwidth is reduced, and you can see that. Um, the efficiency is uh, somewhat bit low because uh, it might be it could be due to because the small size aperture what we consider and the feed horn was uh, with the feed tapper was about uh, 8 dB feed tapper was there so that could be due to the aperture efficiency uh, the, the low aperture, the low low aperture efficiency could be due to that and uh, I'm sorry here it is a 53 percent for this particular case, 1 dB this case and 44 uh, percent. And uh, these are the operating frequencies. You can see that so most of them are operating in XKU and KU bands. And uh, so feature directions. So uh, in the pre first study, what we observed is that several structures are proposed uh, for uh, and the, the, uh, for offering the phase connections. And uh, so further structures are uh, meta surface, artificial lens, frequency selective surfaces, phase shifting surfaces, and many more. Uh, Phase interface. So many more structures are being proposed to, to offer the phase corrections. So the, we thought that okay, we done a, we have done a pre preliminary study on the conceptual equivalence between the microscope battery and artificial lens. Then we, we thought that okay, we will take it, take it forward for uh, several structures to get, get a to unified understanding of uh, several phase correction structures. That is the one in my mind. Second is that bandwidth comparison of elements designed for conventional beam. How it is offering for the same elements when we employ for a shaped beam refractory, what will happen to the bandwidth? So that study you have done. So I have done for two elements, but still further elements, some more elements need to be done. So some UG students, I am trying to guide them, and I am also getting involved in that. And the third objective is use of refractories as a near field focusing antennas. Recently, I have attended one more on a webinar where I could see that the near field focusing antennas. Being widely employed, and I went on. Uh, I went on a search for uh, the, like explored in the open literature, and found that so this is a quite interesting area because uh, the dedicated short range communication, near field communication, and all. so this can be useful because in toll gates and uh, like vehicular to vehicular communications, so several uh, scenarios they can be used. So here the use of uh, there, there are several antennas being used, planar arrays and uh, FSS meta surface are also used. I thought, okay, the refractory also being employed in the year 2011 and 2018, 2019 also I see papers are reported in the refractories as the use of refractory as the refractory focusing antennas. So then I thought that, okay, explore the, um, so for wideband refractories as the near field focusing antennas. And also the comparison of bandwidth of conventional beam uh, refractories with this one. So that, that part of study, I thought of uh, explore and do uh, further. So these are the summary. So so far we have discussed about uh, first we discussed about uh, conceptual equivalence between refractory and contact bags artificial lens. Based on the study, what we did before, like uh, refractor lens and uh, stepped lens load refractor, then we have done a preliminary study. Based on that, we concluded uh, we possible con possibly concluded that this can be a conceptual equivalent. 